Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411, all about Dante Falconeri. You should not be as excited as you are about this. Why? I don't think anyone ever watched Dante as in-depth as you did for this. Well, I have had, first of all, someone had to because they put together the playlist. I guess that's true. So, okay. You and one other person are obsessed with Dante. I just, I'm not obsessed with him. Just like I, we talked about this on Monday's episode. I did not watch when he was, when he first came. Mm Mm-hmm. So I've always known the story about Dominic and, you know, he was the undercover cop and blah, 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 everything that I'm going to get into, but I didn't watch it. And the videos, you know, sometimes we go to watch the videos and we're disappointed in what we find. Right. This is seriously almost back to back to back every second that he was ever on screen. That's awesome. It's awesome. as that organized for you? And they are good scenes. I mean, when I was doing my research, I had already seen all of it but it was nice to have the refresher he was a good character there's no Mm -hmm. disputing that so i guess i understand that part but normally we pick the subject we give ourselves so many days yeah and we just work to wherever we work to and then we read up and that's the end of it every single time we've gone to record this not that i've been ready either but that's just because of procrastinating you are like well i spent another 10 hours on youtube and i'm not done yet i actually have so if i actually sat down and watched it I don't even know how long it would have taken me, (laughs) but I mean, I would go days without doing it. And then I would watch three hours. All right. (laughs) And then I'm excited to hear what you think since you didn't watch it the first time. And there was a lot of stuff not in. So I use Mm generalhospitalfandom.com and YouTube, which the playlist will be listed in the show notes. Mm -hmm. There were some things that were not mentioned in generalhospitalfandom.com. So See, by the time I got to him, he was kind of winding down. So Mm -hmm. the storyline, no, it wasn't good, but it wasn't, you got the fresh stuff from the beginning. So, so go ahead and tell me all that you learned. Okay. About Dante that wasn't actually Dante by the time you're starting. He was Dominic. Exactly. Okay. So, so yeah, we said on Monday that, and I wrote it the first thing in my note, I was trying to figure out why I didn't watch when Dante arrived, but I had just met my husband and I was getting my MBA. I was preoccupied. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's not an excuse to not watch GH. And I was working at the bank that was open from 10 to 7. Oh, okay. So even if I was DVRing it, right? you know. Yeah, I mean, you did have a life. You're allowed. Yeah. So the first scene with Dominic was on June 22nd. Dante was operating under the alias Dominic Pirelli, and he arrived in Port Charles under the order of Claudia Zakara to kill Jason Morgan. However, Claudia's brother, Johnny, intervenes and saves Jason's life, killing several of the shooters. Though he is shot, Dante manages to slip away and finds Morgan Corinthos, who attempts to navigate Dante out of the forest until Carly Jacks, Morgan's mom, shows up. And this was really funny because it was... Before all the kids aged up, except for Michael had just been aged up. Okay. So Morgan was still younger. Okay. Joss wasn't around. Wow. That's crazy. But he grabbed Morgan as he was walking through the woods to Sonny's house. And he actually like covered Morgan's mouth and pulled him back and told him that he was going to take him hostage. And they didn't want to kill him. And Morgan bites him. And Dominic lets him go. And Morgan told him who his dad was. And Carly wound up coming and finding Morgan and telling her telling him to let her son go. And he's like, I don't want to shoot you. And Morgan had been helping him on his PDA because, you know, pre-smartphones. Isn't Doesn't it feel like we've had smartphones for so much longer? Forever. Yeah. But it's not even been 10 years. That's crazy too. But so he was using his PDA, which was probably a BlackBerry, no product placement, but that's what we had then. And Michael came and jumped on Dominic and Dominic wrestled him to the ground and brought him to his feet and asked who he was. And he said, he's Michael Corinthos third. And you're a dead man. Oh, I think Morgan had said that you're a dead man also. So then Dante goes on to say, oh, is that the standard line in the family? You get a gun pulled on you and just say Sonny's name and you're a dead man. Dominic goes on and on. So I'm using Dominic and Dante interchangeably. Just deal with it. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) It's just going to happen. He keeps saying like how 
Carly's hot. And I just made the comment that he was really funny and always sprinkled lots of humor in his dialogue. And kind of towards the end, before he left, they stopped doing that. Because it wasn't always just flirty. It was funny. Yeah, there was humor. It was always Mm -hmm. sarcastic. Yes. So then, then he winds up getting into Sonny's house where he confronts Claudia about her failed plan. And Claudia let him sleep in her bed. So like didn't even know that Dominic was in the house. Sonny mm-hmm. didn't, which I don't know how he did because now it seems like you can't get anywhere without Sonny knowing. Yeah. Right. And he met Christina and she helped him basically out of the house. And he showed up to meet his mother, who was kind of upset that he's in Port Charles, but also happy to see him. And that's Olivia. He doesn't tell her why he's there. Dante goes to Sonny looking for a job and he attempts to get Jason to trust him. But when Claudia and Johnny are against him, Jason is hesitant. Dante then seeks out Christina, asking for access to her father, and Sonny decides to give him a chance anyway when Dante storms into Sonny's house while Carly is there with him. And before Sonny shoots him, he explains that if he had wanted trouble, he would have hurt Carly and her sons, but he didn't. This was funny because... I I have to stop saying this was funny because it wasn't really funny. But the first time that Sonny met Dominic, he was asking for the job. Like Mm -hmm. he wanted to work for him and everything. And Sonny says that he isn't sure if he should bounce his head off a curb or shoot him. And Carly is just in the back going, shoot him, shoot him, (laughs) shoot him, Sonny. And she like just keeps repeating it. Like Sonny is saying his little things and she's just going, shoot him, shoot him. And I just, Carly was more spicy back then too. Yeah. So then I'm trying to go back in between before, between my notes Because there's some stuff that, like always, they have and that is not even relevant. Right. So then he winds up going to Kelly's and rents a room from his not knowing grandfather. At this time, Dominic has no idea that Sonny is his dad. Right. Forgot to mention that. And he is just Olivia's son. He doesn't know who his father is. His mom says, basically, there were a lot of options. But there really wasn't. (laughs) She lied. So he goes to Kelly's and on July 31st, 2009... Dante, still going by Dominic, meets Lulu Spencer at Jake's. And he is so smitten by her. I mean, the second that he sees her, he is just like, hey, what's up? So the reason he had gone to Jake's is that he went to talk to Coleman about protection that he pays for from Sonny. Mm. And Lulu had come in asking Coleman to host another karaoke night because something about Spinelli needed cheered up. So karaoke night was going to make him feel better. So then Dante starts hitting on her at the jukebox and they play pool and exchange names, except for they start giving each other fake names. And she says her name is Trixie and he says he's Thor. Okay. She then says she's Angelique and he comes back with Biff Beauregard and she's like, yeah, that's totally fake. And then he says that his name's Dominic and she says Lulu. Well, Ethan came in and saw him flirting with Lulu. Hmm. And I think if I remember correctly, he knew that Dominic was working or wanted to work for Sonny. So he called Lucky and turns out that Ethan had told Dominic, okay, Ethan had, Coleman had told Ethan that Dominic works for Sonny. And so Lucky and Ethan tell Dominic to leave Lulu alone and they wind up throwing punches at each other. Coleman doesn't even try to stop it. He just like walks right by and was like, guys, take it outside. Like he's cleaning off a table or something. Not even trying. Lulu quote nurses Dominic and Nicholas shows up and gives Ethan and Lucky grief and they tell him that Dom works for Sonny and he gives him some kind of like a, the Cassidine charming threat. And Lulu is so fed up with her brothers that she starts flirting back with Dominic, saying that she has antiseptic back at her place. And she leaves with him despite her, despite her brother's warnings. Coleman comments on what a great game he has. He gets beat up and still leaves with the girl. <laughs> and then Lulu took him to the hospital, get all patched up. And one of the things that we should just do like a whole thing on Dante and Lulu because they really had the cutest they were adorable. I mean, he had the worst pickup lines ever, mm-hmm. ever, ever, ever. But like the whole time, Lulu pretends that she's totally not even interested in him. You know, she's like, nope, nope, nope. That was original Lulu. And she was still really that young That was Julie looking. Berman, yes. So it was like a first real love kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So cute. Was. So then after Lulu took him to the hospital, he walked in on Johnny, Zakara, and Olivia about to do it ew so let's just recap this quick love square lulu and johnny used to date johnny is now with olivia olivia is dante's mom dante is trying to get with lulu ew (laughs) and then morgan and dominic keep seeing each other and they get really really close and it was really sweet and one thing that was like a common thread throughout the next couple years was that they would always talk about the Yankees. But then I feel like when they aged up, Morgan and Dante never had this. Oh, yeah. 
like Kid Morgan had a Yankee helmet that he brought to Dante at one point. You know, he was always talking about, we need to go to the new stadium. And they didn't carry it through. They didn't. That's what and I'm saying. That I was... do. Now that you say that, I never thought about it until you said it. But yeah. I remember, you know, that was cute, like Kid Morgan kind of thing. But I don't remember him saying anything about sports when he was older well and so he was over at carly's because this is when carly and jacks were married he was over at carly's and morgan was going to be taking him to the yankee game and jacks got back just in time and morgan introduced him as that guy that kidnapped me but didn't and let us go and now works for my dad and jason <laughs> so you know jacks felt so comfortable with I'm all sure that he did i guess and then there was like this conversation where Sonny, Morgan, and Dante are all talking about the fact that I guess Sonny and Dante both used to play shortstop and all of this when they played stickball. I don't know. Like it, they never continued that either. Mm. So, I mean, especially now where we're seeing it with Sonny and Mike. Right. You know, and we joke, you know, yeah, we joked about it that we thought they were bringing back Dante after they kept talking about the Yankees so much. Right. You know, Dante and Sonny don't even talk about it. No, they don't. So, mm. so. When Dominic was watching Morgan, I didn't mean to just, you did not see me, air quote, but Amanda did. He took him to the carnival, which that whole carnival oh, was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch the whole thing. I, I was so, so, they so good. They never did that. I mean, I know it ended. I wonder why they stuff, didn't do it again. But they never did that again. I, it was such a good idea, though. Probably because of what I'm going to talk about. I know, but... It, it looked so nice before you had to go and ruin it. Almost I didn't even about. ruin it. I'm watching it 11 <laughs> years late. So Dante and Lulu continue to flirt. He asks to take her to the carnival. She's like, no, Dr. Matt Hunter's taking me. And, and they do that wind was up. pretty hot. He was, he was not bad. <laughs> and he does wind up taking her to the carnival. But he also had to take Morgan. And Michael was there, but he wasn't watching him. Okay. But... Long story short was that Edward Quartermain had a heart attack and wound up passing out behind the wheel and wound up going through one of the, um, like the big barriers that were mm -hmm. closing off one of the streets and almost hit Morgan. But Dominic jumped in front of the car yep. and saved him. And I think that this is when Morgan brought him the helmet to the hospital for good luck. Oh, okay. Like the Yankees helmet mm -hmm. and everything to make him feel better. But... Yeah, so that was in September. And then it says, after nearly facing death, Dante heals up, but his identity is discovered by Jasper Jacks, Carly's husband. That didn't happen for a while. Like, here's the thing. So much stuff happened in between because Olivia could constantly went to go see him. Patrick had overheard Olivia say that he was Dante, her son. And Dom repeatedly says that he doesn't want anyone to contact his mother. Sonny calls Bernie to try to find Dom's parents. Mm. Yep. Patrick approached Olivia about being Dante's mom and confirms that neither Sonny nor Dominic know who each other are. I forget how Patrick figured out that Sonny was his dad, but he did. And Patrick pleads with Olivia that Dom could need a kidney transplant and the family would need to be tested. Lulu stopped by to see him in the hospital and they were talking and Lulu made the comment. She's like, you sound like someone who doesn't like the mob because he would say about how this stuff happened, you know. Right. Look at her being a little smart for a minute. Just a bit. She was very smart. She can be very smart when we write her correctly. So then Claudia winds up discovering that Dominic is really Sonny and Olivia's son after hearing Olivia and Kate Howard talking about it at Jake's. Because Kate was plastered mm. after. Yes. I think it was after the non-wedding of Maxie and Spinelli. Mm -hmm. But she was like, wait, I know you. Oh. Oh, you're, and that's when she started seeing Coleman. Anyway, <laughs> so Claudia threatens both Olivia and Dante with a secret, and she tells Olivia that she will tell Dante about his paternity, and she tells both that she will tell Sonny that Dominic is not loyal, mm -hmm. which could kill him. Right. And the whole reason he's undercover is to take Sonny down. Kind of forgot to say that. And then she forces Olivia to break up with Johnny, and Claudia tries to get Dante into bed wanting to become pregnant to save herself from Sonny because at one point Claudia had had a miscarriage and Dante refuses and he's like why does it have to be me why do you need to have sex with me like go sleep with all these other guys right you know he doesn't know that he exactly could possibly be a close DNA match so then oh and then this is one thing that wasn't even mentioned at all during all of this was that there was an ambush at, so Dominic used to work for the Zakara organization. Mm -hmm. Well, then he started working for the Quintos organization. Right. So there was retaliation where 
Dominic was supposed to be taking Spinelli to the warehouse for something at the last minute, Johnny went instead of him. That was for the, that was for the carnival. I'm so sorry. This is, this is all making sense now, but like this whole section was not in the general hospital fandom. So if I hadn't watched YouTube, wouldn't even know about it. So, oh yeah, because Johnny wound up getting shot while Dominic got hit by the car. So he still wound up in the hospital, just right. not for, for a more heroic reason than for yeah. getting shot in a mob war. So he actually snuck out and went over to Mercy and told Johnny, thank you for taking his place at the warehouse. Lulu stopped by and asked him, and Dominic asked him to bring him back to GH. Olivia just like kind of was watching off to the side, like of him flirting with Lulu. And she's just like, ah, because ah. And then Lulu brought him back and asked if she want, and he asked her if she wanted to help him undress. And she was like, she would go find a trained professional. <laughs> And he told her that he could do it. He just wanted to know if she wanted to help. <laughs> I don't understand trying to hook up in a hospital. I don't think he was really trying I mean, to I'm hook sure, up. Yeah. I'm sure that it wouldn't have gone that far. But even just flirtatious playing, I've never been in a hospital or visited someone in a hospital. And then like, hey. <laughs> right. Let's go. No. So then Epiphany walked in scolding him about leaving the hospital because... Mm. You know, epiphany. And then Lulu left to get him some ice cream. And in the meantime, Ronnie, who was the other undercover guy who knew that he was basically Dante's boss undercover, had recovered his badge and he brought it to him in the hospital. Well, when you're in the hospital, you don't have a lot of places to put things when you're in a gown. So Lulu found it. But then they wound up playing cards. Okay. So, but it was cute because they just started playing cards and everything. I guess Sunny came to see him and this is how Jax found out who he was because he saw the badge sitting like up on a up on like a table or something okay because Jax had come to talk to him about something and then he saw the badge and then as soon as Sonny left he comes back and like throws it on him and he's like okay Detective Falconeri does your mom know like all this Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah I love Jax he was he was tough during all of this. I'm not saying I don't like him, but I'm just saying that he was very... I like that he was tough. I mean, sometimes he's out of line, but I like that he was tough because now I feel like he's wishy-washy. But he was he was only interested in what Dominic could do for him. It had nothing to do True. with actually caring. So Morgan wanted to know if Don Dominic could come live with them after he got out of the hospital so they could Aww. take care of him. And Sonny had actually said no you can come stay with me because if this car is, we're trying to put a hit out on you and they got Johnny instead, they're probably going to go after you and I'm not going to have you around my kids. Right. You know, so, and that's when Jax came back and was like, nope, I will help you make a case against Sonny. Let's get him out of here. And side note, the Badger was not in Sonny's office during the early 2009 scenes. (laughs) Okay. But in November it was, but just not in the glass case, how it is now. And it was next to an urn or something that looked like an urn. So I don't know, like a big urn. So I don't know. Could have been a vase. A but vase. I wonder why they took it from just on the desk to now it needs to be glass. Oh my paint. gosh. Yeah. Because it's a display now. Yes, it is. I don't know. So the whole time during all this, you know, Dante and Lulu are flirting like crazy. And he always tells her that he's like going to take her to the opera and all this stuff. He finally gets to take her in December. But... I forgot to mention that a month before he actually protected Sonny during an ambush in 2009, which gained his trust. But then, oh, no. Okay. So then in November, whenever he basically finally gets out of the hospital and all healed up and everything, he goes back to working for Sonny. And then Sonny winds up getting shot at and he jumps in front of Sonny and protects him from, like, gets him down the ground so he doesn't get shot. And then in December 2009, he went to the PCPD to look up an arrest and he was caught by Lucky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, hold it. The one thing that they totally left out of General Hospital fandom, Lulu finding out. Oh, that's ridiculous. So. Especially since they all happened within the same. She overheard Dante on the Elm Street Pier talking to Ronnie about being undercover, except for she was heavily under the influence. Uh, she might have accidentally been drugged by drinking water from a bottle that wasn't hers. So he took her to her room at Kelly's and she passed out on the bed. But I mean, she was trying to come on to him. And like, this was when, mm-hmm. no, 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 not going to do it. She kept calling him officer, but it was like really, really cute. Like how she kept saying, she's like, okay, officer. And then she didn't remember anything the next day, but then she eventually did. So that's why she let him kind of sneak in to Lucky's office. Okay. See, you need to know this. It might have actually, okay, in the 
at a couple rose up. Lily discovered his identity after the two were nearly killed in the search of Claudia Zakara, who had kidnapped a pregnant Carly. Right, that's not enough. Right. So then during all of that, when Claudia had kidnapped Carly, Lulu, Dante, Lulu and Dante went to the Zakara mansion to see if he had taken her there, if Claudia had taken Carly there. And Johnny had the same idea, and she, Lulu was walking ahead of them and fell through the floorboards into a flooding basement. And Dante jumped in to save her and wound up sitting with her, like, for a long time, mm -hmm. not in General Hospital Phantom. Oh, that's messed up, because that, that was a very important scene. Yes. And then he kept talking to her about taking her to the opera. And at the hospital, he told her, although he loves her, having a nickname for him, because she remembered while they were in the water that he was an officer and she was like, please don't take down Sonny, you know, all this. But she kept saying it in a hospital. She was, he was like, you need to stop saying it or I'm a dead man. And she seems resistant to turn a blind eye and had a hard time believing some of the things that Dominic was saying Sonny had done until Luke had come to see her said, I'm sure that Dominic has some work for Sonny to do like fitting Claudia for cement shoes or a three by six box. Mm -hmm. And then Lulu was like, what are you talking about? Sonny's not bad. Yup. <laughs> And she does tell Luke that Dominic saved her and sat in the freezing water with her for over an hour or she would have drowned. And she did eventually agree to go out with him. And then in December, he picked her up in a limo and took her to see the opera in Manhattan. And she found out that she liked it. And then in January, oh, oh, oh. And then this is when Jonathan Jackson came back as mm. lucky. Yay, best Yay. day ever. I wrote, I can't remember when I wrote this part, though. It would have been during the whole Claudia thing, though. Lulu had invited him over to play rock band to take a break from everything. Oh, Like, they were just, and I said, they're just like Willow and Chase, like, just having fun and enjoying each other's company. Yes. And they still haven't had sex. Right. I think they had kissed, but that's it. Mm -hmm. It took them forever mm -hmm. to have sex. Right. And then... Jax basically was blackmailing Dante to get Sonny, and he kept saying that he wasn't doing his job, blah, 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 blah. So then, then in January 2010, Franco had kidnapped Sam. Dante got involved in all of that. Johnny, at one point, had overheard Olivia and Dante talking about him being her son. Mm. And so they decided to team up and take down Sonny and everything because at this point Johnny thought that Sonny had killed his sister right so he was like mm -mm. and then January 28th Ronnie informed Dante that the arrest warrant for Sonny had come in and Dante told Ronnie that they just wanted to wait until after Jocelyn's christening so you know we christen babies okay okay because they're catholic and mm -hmm. so babies 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 get christened mm -hmm. in January 2010 mm -hmm. so 10 years ago Jocelyn got <laughs> Just throwing that out there for sore ass, for sore ass sake. And Dante just wanted them to have one last good day. But then on the day of Jocelyn's christening, Sonny discovered that Dominic was an undercover cop and he called him and he's like, but I have to go to this christening. He's like, I told you, you need to come here. And when he did, it's no guards, no nothing, just Sonny and Dante. And they have words. Mm -hmm. Sonny lets him know that he knows who he is and then shoots him point blank. And Olivia's, Barging through the door and is like, you just shot your son. I knew that happened on an important day. I kept thinking it happened right after a nurse's ball. Mm. So I'm glad that you reminded me about Jocelyn's christening. No, it was Jocelyn's christening instead. Yeah. And it seems weird that Sonny's any part of that considering Jocelyn's not his. Well, he wasn't going to it. Oh, he just think... knew that Dante was? Okay. I thought well, you meant they Lulu... like, were all going. Lulu is Jocelyn's godmother. Oh, I didn't know she was yep. her godmother. I knew that they were related, yep. obviously, because of Carly. Lulu is Jocelyn's godmother, and she was so nervous. And so Dante was going to be accompanying to her to the christening, and she couldn't mm -hmm. find her. But Olivia was going to the christening. I forget exactly what happened right before, but Olivia put two and two together and was like, mm -hmm. nope, I need to go to Sunny's, go house, to Sunny's house. Yeah. So then the look on Sunny's face when she said that was just like, oh, no. Yeah. But a lot of other choice words, I'm sure. Right. That was a good scene. I still remember that. Because it was perfect. The timing was perfect uh -huh. for Olivia to break in and be like, you shot your son. Yep. 
So Dante still doesn't know at this point, though. Right. He's died on the floor. Someone called 911. So Sonny and Olivia rush him to the hospital. And meanwhile, when the um, ambulance gets there to get him, they're like parents or family only. And Sonny's like, I'm his dad. I'm like, just shut him. You don't get right in the ambulance. But anyway, Dante winds up surviving the surgery and woke up on February 3rd with Lulu by his side. And Sonny comes and tells him that he's his father. Because why not? Mm -hmm. I just shot you, but I'm your dad. It's okay. So you have to cover for me because you can't tell the whole world that I'm your dad. I shot you. Dante was not too happy with Olivia. Rightfully so. And it was funny because Sonny and Olivia, while Dante was in surgery or he was like in the ER room or whatever... Sonny said something to Olivia about being his father and you just see Epiphany like walking in the background and she just drops a tray of tools. So like, I don't know if she knew from before. But right. she, was, she was speechless. Epiphany was speechless and just had her mouth open. It was, it was funny. And Dante winds up saying that he accidentally shot himself. Sonny tries to build a relationship with him. Dante resists. And then, you know, Carly and Robin try to talk to him about it. And I'm not going to go, I'm not going to read every single detail because I've already spent over a half hour on one year. <laughs> but that's okay. You gave us all kind of detail. And this was important. You needed this to was know. Important. Right. But like right now, I'm here. not going to read line for right. line. Oh, everyone no. who went to try to talk to him no. <laughs> about establishing a relationship with his dad. When he was Dominic, he was sitting at Kelly's outside and Christina had come over and she was like, do guys just use you for sex or just like say nice things to you to have sex and then ignore you? And he actually brought her inside. He said, oh, I made the comment. I said, I love the, how they gave Dominic a way to act brotherly with Morgan, Michael and Christina before knowing he was a brother. He helped Christina when she asked if guys are just nice to you until after you have sex. And she tells him that he doesn't have to answer if it's going to give secrets of the quote brotherhood away. And he said, well, that's the thing. His brotherhood doesn't disrespect women and lying someone into bed and dumping her after isn't the kind of guy that's worth the gum under her chair. If he disrespects her like that, he then offered to pound him into the ground, which is what guys like him have been known to do to guys like Kiefer. Aww. So after he heals, after he's on his son, all that is when Christina gets beat in the hospital by Kiefer and Dante becomes a really good big brother. (laughs) She originally had actually said that Ethan had done it. And then they wind up finding out that it's not true. And he talked to her. That's because she wound up in the hospital again. First Dante and Lucky sat down with him and tried to play like the good cop, bad cop on him to get it out of him that Christina got what she deserved. Mm -hmm. And he actually figured it out like at the last minute, like right before he was going to confess. So I think it was like the next day Christina wound up in the hospital again and Dante was like, listen, like this is not a coincidence. Right. You know, we just talked to him yesterday, today, you're here again. And so she did tell him she was worried that Sonny was going to kill Kiefer. So then Kiefer, Kiefer, Kiefer. Mac winds up assigning him to a narcotics case so that he basically stays out of his own family's business (laughs) for a little while. Oh, and during all this time is they're still trying to figure out Claudia's killer and Michael gets whisked away to the Mm. island. Uh Uh-huh. Dante goes down and he didn't see Michael, but he definitely knew that he was there. Yeah. See, and in my mind, that's when when Michael aged up. It is. Yes. So, okay. Michael aged up when Dante came back. Okay. But then they did. But yes, like he aged up in 2009. Okay. Okay. See, I'm not as crazy. But, no, 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 no. <laughs> but then Dante is hellbent on Sonny having killed Claudia. Mm-hmm. And he can't figure out, you know, all this stuff. So he finds like ashes in the, of a shirt that has Claudia's blood on it mm-hmm. in Sonny's fireplace and everything. That's right. actually how they got the warrant for before when, you okay. know. So Dante winds up going to the island again and confronts Michael about, you know, you're a witness, you need to say what you saw, blah, blah, blah. And Michael's like, oh, but this is when they recast to Chad Duell. Mm -hmm. And they announced it for three or four episodes. Wow, that's impressive. The role of Michael Corinthos III will now be played by Chad Duell. Three times, at least. Now we don't even know. Nope. Nope. Michael confesses to killing Claudia. And then Dante's like, what the heck? 
<laughs> so then he's all torn because, okay, Sonny is on trial and he deserves to go to jail, but, but it's not for the for wrong that. thing. Yep. And Michael would be so much better off because they're definitely not going to send a 17 year old to jail. Right. Except they and do. it was in self defense because Claudia had kidnapped Carly, was trying to take his baby sister. But no, he winds up getting Michael to go to the court and confess and he goes to jail and nobody's happy with him. Right. At all. And then this is where I started to skip because I knew I wasn't going to have time. (laughs) Because we didn't have a whole year to do one. No, no. (laughs) And so during my skip time, he was assigned to catch serial killer Franco, which actually we talked a lot about this part during the Franco. Mm -hmm. So you can just go back and listen to the Franco episode. In May 2010, Carly brought Brooklyn Ashton to town when she learned of her past friendship with Dante. She wants Brooke to break up Dante and Lulu by seducing Dante. I can't remember why she wanted that. See, but here's the thing. Like, I watched all this. I right. remember all of this. So I don't know when, when, why, what. But it wasn't until August that Brooklyn had asked Dante to come to Jake's and talk. And she said that she had been, like, suffering from panic attacks. And she winds up drugging him. Wasn't it just the fact that she didn't want her cousin with the guy who sent Michael to prison? It could have been. Inadvertently. See, but that's the thing. Right. Is that like, I skipped ahead. Yeah. No, but I can't remember any other reason, but I do remember that. And even more so now, because that's all Brooklyn talks about is how Maxie hates her. Right. Or Lulu, Lulu hates, hates her, her for that reason. Yeah. Lulu and Maxie, I guess, technically, but you know what I mean. But so she does seduces him and then, you know... Lulu finds them. The next morning, Dante doesn't remember anything. He brings her flowers and cupcakes to reconcile. At one point, Dante actually had custody of Michael. So, like, Michael had gotten out of jail, I guess, on parole. Mm -hmm. And so they they put him in Dante's custody. Yeah. In September 2010, Lulu's brother Lucky heads to Ireland to on an undercover assignment for Interpol. And he and Lulu try to assist him. Dante and Lulu try to assist Lucky. When Brenda Barrett returns to town and it is revealed that she and Dante have a past together. He had been assigned to guard her along with three other officers. One night while they were on a walk, the Balkan's son, Alexander Yannick, Yannick, Yancic, sure, came after Brenda and attacked Dante. Brenda picked up the gun that had fallen and shot Alexander. He died and Dante covered for Brenda by throwing the body in the water. And she was also pregnant. And Dante signed over his rights to her. So I did watch part of this. I didn't get to the part where they slept together. They didn't. So who was she pregnant by? I don't know. Then why do people think that Dev could be Dante and Brenda's? I'm almost 100% positive they didn't sleep together. She just told everyone that it was Dante's. And then he signed off on the rights so that whoever, it was some bad person's kid, but I don't know who. Hmm. But yeah, they keep saying I am now that deeply Dev... regretting the past month that I've been spending on YouTube that I didn't, but, I didn't even make it through 2010 and, after watching a month of Dante. That's what everyone's saying is that the timeline doesn't match up for Dev to be Brenda's kid. Not that it has to, because we, again, know from Jocelyn. <laughs> Jocelyn's with 310. But Dev would only be eight then. Violet's only supposed to be like two. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'll Google while you keep You Google, talking interrupt and me while I can tell you. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. And then in December 2010, Olivia had gone on the ski trip as a chaperone. And that's when the whole bus crashed. We talked about that or something. And Olivia wound up in the hospital. And then I am really trying to cut this. So then a few weeks later, Theo Hoffman goes to Dante's apartment while Lulu is there. And they start talking. And Theo reveals that Brenda killed Alexander in 2007. And Dante had covered it up. And Lulu confronted Dante and storms out because the whole thing when Brenda came back was Spinelli started acting all gaga over the divine one is what he calls Brenda. Of course, Carly's all mad because she's married to Jax and, you know, Jax, yeah. Sonny, and Brenda had a thing. Well, no, <laughs> the three of them didn't have a thing. <laughs> no, that did a new storyline. <laughs> that did not happen. <laughs> so then... Dante is stopped by later, and she refuses to forgive him. They run into each other again near his apartment. Oh, and that's the other thing. She found his loft for him. He said that he needed to move out of the room above Kelly's. She found it for him. That was very nice. And the one thing I didn't say is that they finally had sex at this. Like, by the time we get to 2011, they finally had done it. But it seriously took them forever. They kept being interrupted. I mean, interrupted by phones, people walking in, you know, stuff like that. And then they get into the stuff about Abby... Because she got attacked. See, that's the thing. He gets pulled into a lot of these side stories because he's a cop. Right. 
So there's no way that he can Yeah, I had a yep. lot of problem with that too. So then January 2011, Brenda stopped by his apartment and talks to him about the baby. She said that she wanted to go on a trip and was cleared for travel. But when she got to Africa, she spiked a fever. She fainted. And when she woke up, she saw Suzanne. And Suzanne is like the director of ASEC, which is Brenda's Alliance to Save Exploited Children. Mm -hmm. The Suzanne is the director for her charity. We should be talking more about this charity. Very, very true. I mean, I know that Brenda's not on the show anymore right at this moment, but still, that's a really good charity to be supporting. I agree. You know, have Sonny write a check, have him sit down and write his checks every year at Christmas for his annual giving, and that's one of the ones that he does. So then, so yeah, so she knew that she had miscarried. Dante tried to comfort her, and she hugs him. Lulu stops by and finds Brenda in Dante's arms. She walks out, and Brenda tells him to go after her. Lulu goes back to her apartment, and Dante comes by. He knocks on the door, but Lulu doesn't want to let him in. Maxie eventually opens the door and leaves to visit Matt. He explains that he had a rough night because Michael's friend was almost raped and he was only trying to comfort Brenda, still hiding the details of the baby because at the same time, she still didn't know that like, right. She says <laughs> that she'll forgive him for tonight, but that they're still broken up. When he goes to the hospital to follow up Abby's attack, Michael reveals to him that while he was in Pentonville, he was raped. And Dante gives him a heartfelt apology, feeling as if it is, was his fault because this is when he went to jail for admitting to kill Claudia. Right. He recalls the event of when Judge Carroll sent Michael to prison and Carly stops by and confronts him about Michael being raped in prison. She picks up a gun off the table and points it at him. He tells her to shoot him because... She can't hate him any more than he hates himself. Through a series of flashbacks and conversations, it is revealed that Dante helped Brenda cover up the murder of her ex-boyfriend. Okay, so that might be the dad, mm -hmm. Alexander, the son of international crime figure, Theo Hoffman, also known as the Balkan. Dante's secret leads to Lulu breaking up with him. In February, at Sonny and Brenda's wedding, Dante was serving as the best man. And Carly shocks everyone by revealing that Brenda and Dante had a child together. So Dante told the truth that he only pretended to be the father to keep the Balkan from finding out about the child. The Balkan plants a bomb on Sonny and Brenda's car, and Brenda disappears after it explodes. Though Brenda is eventually rescued, Dante's fellow police officers are happy with how he cooperated with Sonny and Jason to find her. Dante and Luke Lulu reconcile after he promises to never lie to her again. Luke leaves town, refusing to face the fact that his drinking caused him to run down his grandson, Jake, and Lulu goes after him. Dante tracks her to a bordello in Florida where Lulu works as an undercover waitress. Mm -hmm. The owner discovers that Dante is a cop and attempts to rape Lulu before she and Dante escape. The couple then travels to Helena Cassidine's island in Greece looking for Luke. It's like there are many Luke and Laura during all this time. Oh, don't say that. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they always have the traveling. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. In August 2011, oh, she told him about Luke raping Laura, too. Oh, wow. Whenever, it was like right after, right after he found out that he was Sonny's son, it was around the same time that Ethan had been told or um, suspected of hurting Christina. Oh, okay. And so Lulu's like, yeah, but my dad did this to my mom. So Ethan is his son. It could be in his blood. Dante says to her, like, I'm Sonny's son. And she was super, super protective of him, mm -hmm. you know, and very much like Sonny needs to go to jail. Like, yeah, he's forgiving you. He's trying to work on stuff with you, but I am not. Right. I mean, she was, she was fierce. I think that that helped her click with, okay, maybe Ethan could have not done it. Right. Because. No, you're not your parents. Nope. So the couple travels to Helena Cassidy's Island. Lulu's brother Nicholas convinces her to return home, and in August of 2011, Dante asks Lulu to move into his apartment, and she is hesitant. He later asks Lulu to marry him, and she hesitates, but eventually decides to accept his proposal over dinner. And when Dan Dante goes to Sunny's warehouse to investigate, he is shot by Anthony Zakara, and Dante recovers, but Lulu is terrified to marry him, fearing he'll leave her as a widow. But... Back when she knew that Dante was an undercover cop, she kind of like had a very cryptic conversation with Olivia mm -hmm. about it was basically like being with someone in this. Right. Even though she had been with Johnny first, they were talking about that stuff. And she goes, you know, my son's a cop because like everything that Lulu was asking was. Yeah. And she's like, you know about him. She's like, yeah. 
So she had already like she knew this before she even dated him. Right. And he had been shot before. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, I I remember not getting that when it happened because I get the concern, sure, but you have all these signs. Like, like, was it different though for you when you were dating a cop versus when you were engaged to a cop and then married to a cop? Or it was different for me because where he worked was different. When okay. we first got together, he just wanted to be a cop. He hadn't finished all of his training. Okay, so he worked at like our local amusement park and did security and stuff. So there was risk there but it wasn't the same level of risk right once you actually become an officer i was lucky because he has a lot of other things that he wants to do so again there's always a risk but he's not in a huge department that's handling a million calls a day and like out there as much but when he got into like the drug task force and stuff like that yeah it was terrifying yeah i don't think that that mattered you know what stage of our relationship i mean i still fear for him even now and he's just the girl's dad so but you're aware of it, no matter what. Right. You know, it's kind of like Megan and her volunteer firefighting and whatever. You can't tell somebody, no, they can't do what they want to do just because you're scared for it. Right. But it's a real, I don't know, reality. Real reality. That's a good word. It's together. a real reality. <laughs> no, it's a real possibility that something bad is going to happen in the line of duty. But it's also a real possibility that you could get hurt in a car accident tomorrow. Like, you just right. never know. Right. And so... I feel like you couldn't, you could get stuck on any profession in that way. I don't know. That was Lulu's immaturity at the time, I think, especially like we said. She's already, he's already got shot multiple times. I mean, he got, got hit by a car. That wasn't on duty. He was just hanging out with his brother. Maybe at the the proximity of, okay, I literally just accepted your proposal and next day you're shot. That could be. Yeah. That could be. Yeah. Because sure she was definitely very, very well aware of. Right. And she helped them keep the secret for a while. Like, I mean, they had had, there were several times where it was, okay, Sonny's going to find out that I'm his son. So, or I'm an undercover cop. I'm going to die. But he tried to break up with her and she was like, heck no. Right. That's what, that's so, you know, he tried to protect her already. And she was like, "Uh uh-uh, like she got it. Exactly. So yeah, I don't understand the whole, I don't know that I can marry you. Okay. At least at that point, you have some kind of police family. You're not just the girlfriend or whatever. Well, the good news is, is that Lulu eventually came to terms with her fear and accepted his proposal. While on a trip to New York, Dante and Lulu were married by cousin Tommy in a private ceremony with only Olivia in attendance. Meanwhile, Lulu begins at the PCPD as the evidence clerk. Oh, that was horrible. The evidence room clerk. Dante, Ronnie, and Dante's new partner, Dolores, get involved in a case of a man who is beating strippers. In February 2012... Dante attends Sonny's charity benefit in honor of General Hospital's pulmonary wing. Dante and Johnny get into an argument in which Sonny reveals that Claudia was Johnny's mother, not his sister. And when Dante (laughs) and Sonny argue in the parking lot, Sonny pushes Dante out of the way of a bullet and Dante begins to understand just how much Sonny loves him. And that's when the relationship starts to mend. Aw, thanks for taking a bullet. But yeah, he jumped in front of how many for Sonny and... That was just his instinct, though. Right. Blah, 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 blah. Side story, side story. Olivia was drugged by Heather Weber. And then Dante and Lulu were having a serious talk in their marriage and decided Olivia Olivia had hallucinated that Lulu was heavily pregnant when in reality, Lulu might actually be pregnant. And Dante doesn't know that Lulu took a test. On August 13th, Dante finds the test, which is positive, but he thinks the test is Maxie's. And Lulu tells him that Maxie isn't the one who's pregnant. She is. And he is so shocked that he almost chokes. And then he tells her how happy he is and asks if she has any reservations. She says no. And afterwards, the expectant couple celebrates. The next morning when the couple wakes up, they discuss the baby and decide to keep the pregnancy a secret until they know more. After they talk, Lulu schedules an OB appointment for later that day. At the appointment, the doctor tells him that Lu- tells them that Lulu is not pregnant. They decided to get pregnant right away, but have problems. That was so sad. That was sad. And Dante and Lulu find that she can't care a baby to term. They try the adoption route, but Lulu lies on the application and the agency blacklists them throughout a national database. Lulu interviews potential surrogate mothers, but they cannot find the right one. Maxie then proposes that she should be the surrogate, but Lulu rejects that as well. After interviewing more potential candidates, they realize that Maxie is their best option. And on Christmas Eve, Dante and Lulu find out that Maxie is pregnant. But on New Year's Eve, Maxie trips and falls while trying to get rid of a puppy that came inside her apartment. This was also one of Olivia's hallucinations. Yep. She goes to the hospital where her doctor, Britt Westbourne, tells her that she has miscarried the baby. 
Maxie is heartbroken and tries to tell Dante and Lulu, but is unable to bring herself to it. Maxie goes back to the hospital and asks Britt to implant her with another of Dante and Lulu's embryos so they wouldn't find out about that Maxie had miscarried. However, Britt tells Maxie she's already pregnant because of one night stand she had had with Spinelli. And Maxie decides to pass off that child as Lulu and Dante's so they will get the child that they want. I like your puppy dog face. That oh, it was so hard to watch all of that because I totally I get it. Like you, I don't know. I always thought I could be a surrogate for someone, but then I would feel so horrible if something happened. Yeah, but I loved being pregnant. So like, oh, you're crazy. Oh my gosh, I loved it. You're crazy. <laughs> I didn't hate being pregnant. It wasn't awful, but I didn't love being pregnant. So whenever people say that, I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. Kind of silly, but okay. I really did. So, but it's an experience. I would feel bad, like, watching that also, because that's where mine picks up. For Lulu, you did. You just felt bad. Right. They played it very true to life, I would assume, and it made you sad, because if you want to be a mom, you should be allowed to be a mom. Yep, I agree. But so that's all that I have for 2009 through 2012. So join us next week as Amanda goes over 2013 through 2019 about Dante. So have a good weekend and we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 